In today's video, we'll discuss Louis XIII. Louis XIII, the first son of King Henri IV and Maria de' Medici, was born at the Chateau de Fontainebleau on September 27, 1601. Louis grew up away from court under the care of Madame de Mougla and physician Jean Herouard. The latter kept a detailed diary about the upbringing of the young heir to the throne, leaving behind a unique document about the life of young Louis XIII. Louis received an education in Latin, geometry, mathematics and music, but was not a very active student. Only history, artistic lessons, such as playing musical instruments and military activities, interested him. Louis's father, Henry IV, was murdered on May 14, 1610, by the religious fanatic François Ravaillac. Consequently, Louis now became Louis XIII and was crowned King of France on October 17, 1610, in Rhin Cathedral. Due to his young age, his mother, Maria de' Medici, took on the Regency of France. The Regency of Maria de' Medici did not run smoothly. The government, appointed by the Medici, handled affairs badly and many used their powerful positions for personal gain. The mismanagement caused the outbreak of serious disturbances, leading to political instability and eventually to the convocation of the Estat General. The Queen's pro-Italian and pro-Spanish policies gave rise to bitterness within Louis, and although his father had sought a marriage between Louis and the Princess of Lorraine, Maria de' Medici arranged a marriage between Louis and Anne of Austria instead. The 14-year-old boy was obligated by Maria de' Medici to consummate the marriage immediately after the ceremony, which led to further trauma for both Louis XIII and Anne. The disastrous wedding night was one of the reasons it took many years before an heir was born. When Louis XIII reached the legal age to rule, Maria de' Medici had no intention of giving up her seat of power. Louis was purposely kept away from government matters and was relegated to a corner of the Louvre, which made the surprise all the greater when the barely 16-year-old king seized power on April 24, 1617. In order for Louis XIII to retain his power, he eventually retorted to exiling his mother to Blois. In 1620, Maria de' Medici started a civil war which ended with her defeat. In order to prevent any further coups and in order to keep the peace, the king allowed his mother to return to court. When Louis wanted more personal involvement in state affairs, and therefore wished to bind himself to a single minister, Cardinal Richelieu, who had been the representative of the Estat General in 1614, was brought into the King's Council. The King's relationship with Richelieu was complex, but also involved into a real friendship over time. Louis and Richelieu shared the same vision of how France needed to be governed. In the meantime, the relationship between Louis and his wife, Anne of Austria, had not improved. After 11 years, there still was no heir to the throne. In 1626, the Queen, Anne of Austria, participated in a plot devised by the Count of Chalet with the aim to depose the King and placing his brother and heir, Gaston, Duc d'Orléans, on the throne of France. When the plot was discovered, the relationship between the spouses deteriorated even further. Furthermore, from the start of France's involvement in the Thirty Years' War in 1635, Anne of Austria tried to secretly inform Spain about French military and political arrangements, although she was kept away from all decisions of the king. After this betrayal was also discovered, the pious king considered divorce, but opted out, as it would cause too many difficulties with the Holy See. Louis XIII wanted to go down in history as Louis the Just at a young age. He did not understand justice in the modern sense, but Louis XIII and his minister made essential steps on France's path to continental supremacy and absolutism. The knowledge most people have about Louis XIII nowadays is mostly influenced by literary fiction rather than by historical studies. The image of the feeble, uninterested and naive idiot who was constantly being manipulated by the scheming Cardinal Richelieu 
was shaped in particular by the novel The Three Musketeers by Alexandre Dumas. In reality, Louis XIII was a shy person who did not feel comfortable in company and tended to stutter. Nevertheless, he was strong-willed and acted decisively and often ruthlessly. He found himself in a constant inner battle between his role as an absolute monarch and his personal feelings. Louis XIII once said, I would not be king if I allowed myself the feelings of a private person. The monarch's ruthlessness was well known to Richelieu, who always acted with full awareness that he owed his position solely to the king's benevolence. Louis took all important decisions himself. In the last 12 years of his life, Louis XIII saw how, under the joint rule with Richelieu, the power of France and the power of the French royals were continuously strengthened. The late birth of his two sons, in 1638, and 1640 ensured the dynastic survival of the royal family. The two sons of Louis XIII and Anne of Austria are Louis Dieudonné, the future Louis XIV of France, and Philippe of France, Duc d'Anjou, the later Duc d'Orléans. Despite the birth of his two children, the marriage between Louis and Anne of Austria remained unhappy. This led to Louis XIII doubting if the children were actually his. However, recent genetic studies prove that Louis XIV was indeed a descendant from Henri IV, thus guaranteeing that a son of Henri IV is indeed the father of Louis XIV. There is no historical evidence that states Louis XIII had any mistresses. It is known, however, that he had two close feminine relationships, both platonic, one with Marie de Hautefort, the Duchess of Halloua, and one with Louise de Lafayette, with whom Louis wanted to retire to Versailles. It is believed Louis XIII was homosexual, however, this was not historically proven. In December 1642, Cardinal Richelieu died. In order to pursue the same policies Louis held while governing with Richelieu, he quickly appointed one of Richelieu's closest confidants, Cardinal Mazarin, to take Richelieu's place. Louis XIII died on May 14, 1643, 33 years to the day after his father, Henri IV, was assassinated in 1610. The king died at the age of 41 and is believed to have suffered from Crohn's disease. This chronic disease severely weakened Louis, but he was de facto killed by his doctor, Bouvard, who performed 34 bleedings, 1,200 enemas and 250 purges on the king in the last two years of his life. The king's body was buried at the Basilica of Saint-Denis without any ceremony, following Louis's wishes not to burden his people with excessive and unnecessary expenses. Just before dying, Louis XIII wrote a will installing a regency council during the minority of the Dauphin in order to limit the power of his wife, Anne of Austria, whom he still did not trust. However, after Louis XIII's death, Anne of Austria had Louis's will annulled by the Parliament of Paris and indeed became regent of France during the minority of her son, King Louis XIV. Thank you for watching this week's video about the Bourbon dynasty. I'll see you next week.